All right, guys, happy week seven of the college football season. Alabama rolling into the week, still undefeated in SEC play with a big win over Texas A&M. The Tide uh, figuring things out offensively, defensively as well on the road in College Station, Texas. We're going to talk about everything. Mike McCoy and I, we're going to talk about the big win over the Aggies. And then, of course, look ahead to this game on Saturday back at Bryant-Denny Stadium against Arkansas. Let's go head to head. Welcome in, everybody. I want to thank our sponsor, the Alabama Cattlemen's Association. We're excited to be joining you for another week. Mike McCoy joining us from the Maximum Performance Institute in Bessemer. Uh, Mike, we're talking a minute ago that both of us had a uh, similar weekend, so to speak, uh, right smack dab in the middle of the Alabama game. We were at the pumpkin patch. <laughs> Not together, but we were at the pumpkin patch. At the pumpkin patch. Uh, kids definitely run, run the house. So I'm watching Man. the entire game from my phone. So. Yep. Um, celebrating in the midst of him being in the cornhole. The corn. If you take a toddler in the corn pit, you might your day's over. Okay, because the second that you try to pull them out of there, they are going to like have a out of body experience, and that is harder to deal with than like any SEC defense. They are losing it. You're trying to maintain them. I mean, it, it's impossible, Mike. It was crazy for me up there at Helena Hollow, and uh, man, I had to watch the game on Sunday because I just could not do both. So kudos to you for doing both. Honestly, I, I believe I told my wife we need to put one in the backyard and charge kids five bucks. It's the cheapest. Yes. <laughs> and then they're exhausted. Thing in yes, the world. Exactly. And then they're exhausted. And that is always the goal. All right, guys, let's talk some um, football now. Alabama went to Texas A&M and came out of Aggie land with a win. I'm um, in moments. It wasn't pretty. But second half, that's the first thing I want to talk about is the second half resiliency from this team, especially on the defensive side. Mike, I was just totally impressed with the tide um, on the road in the second half well we bama has always and i think will always be a fourth a second half team when you yeah. see them famous throw them fours up yeah. that meant something mm -hmm. um i was I, kudos to the defense uh mm -hmm. They stepped up, man. They they yeah. played lights out. I'm 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 just happy we won. The offense seems to, in times and specifically in the air, really really get going. You've been saying this all year long that Jalen Milro is that guy that he's not just going to beat people on their feet. He's going to beat them in the air. And boy, did he have some throws to Jermaine Burton that I was like. Well, where has that been? I mean, it was it was an impressive day in that connection. This could have been going on <laughs> since last year. Like, let sure. the guys play. Just yeah. take – I use this analogy. What's more dangerous, a pit bull that's on the leash, being controlled by somebody, or one that's walking freely? It's a good way to put it. You've got to let these, let these guys play. The same thing that got that boy to Alabama should be the same thing that keep him at Alabama. Yeah. Hip. Him running the show. Let him be yep. the point guard. Yep. And we know, I, I honestly, his deep ball is second to none. It's I, it's I, impressive. I mean, yes. Maybe I'm biased because I got A on my chest, but the boy can flat out play. Consistency on offense is one of the things that Nick Saban has harped on week in and week out. And that's where I'm going to kind of bring up the concerns from the Texas A&M win. Listen, a win is a win is a win. You go to mm -hmm. any SEC place on the road, I don't care who you're playing. It could be Missouri. It could be. Vanderbilt, you, you're glad to come out with a win. Bama's 3-0 in the conference. The running attack is a concern because every year, every year, they has ever had any success on the national level, they have had a dominant or at least very impressive run game. We're talking about 23 total net yards. Now, Jason McClellan went for 45 on the ground. But obviously, that is subtracted with the sacks and things like that of Milrow or tackles for loss. If we want to win a national title, we have to run the ball down their throats. It's just... It, it, it's a must yeah. uh it's a must have and i understand what the nfl is doing they're trying to make the running backs you know we're trying to ooh, slide them on out but if i'm coach saving i'm going old school i'm going to run it down your throat into that fourth quarter where you get tired of tackling me and then i'm taking it off the top mm -hmm. it has to be a balance yes they stop the run, we're going to beat them with the pass. They stop yeah. the pass, we're going to beat them the with run. the run. It's yeah. chess. And I, I I don't think they're utilizing these guys enough. I, yeah. Now, the left side is... is sure. Is we, talked, we talked about concern with the offensive line. Yeah, that's for sure. So, yeah. And that's my other concern is is the, the pre-snap penalties. I, I think Nick Saban was going to have a 
mental breakdown on the sideline. If Bama had one more false start or pre-snap penalty on the road at Texas A&M, they, here's the thing. This is not the first time Bama's played on the road under Nick Saban in the SEC, right? Okay. They have dealt with crowd noise. So I, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not one to sit here and say, okay, the Aggies 109,000 strong is what impacted. There, there is a, a, a problem here. What is it and how does it get resolved? Now, not trying to make any excuse, but it is very hard for the O-linemen. Skill guys, I watch the ball no matter what. Even if I can't hear the snap count, we are always taught. When that ball snap, that's when you, you go. Um, it's tough when they go silent because you can't clap. The guard has to touch the center. He has to hike the ball. There's a lot of moving pieces when you go silent. Sure, yeah, okay. Um, so I give a little grace to those guys. Now, okay. I don't know if you've been to AM or even LSU I have. at nighttime. I have. It is extremely loud. Now, I don't know if Coach Saban is still doing like what we used to do. Used to have them loudspeakers and the band. He said, no, he practice. said going into the game, they did it on Thursdays, that they prepared for the crowd noise on Thursday going into the game. Well, he used to do that. Every, it was, we used to have a period Monday through Thursday like yeah. that. Yeah. So I don't know if he's um, kind of taping back a little bit. Hey, man, go back to your old ways. That's what got you to them six titles. Sure. Man. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. Um, but for the crowd noise, I think that's something that that's an easy fix. And it probably the silent count is something they probably worked on maybe one period. So when okay. you got to go silent, it's tough. So those penalties, I, I, I was like, what the H E double L going on now? Yeah. Um, but so was the thing that so was coach Saban. So that tells me, that tells me Mike that, I mean, if Nick Saban is watching this and he goes, okay, yeah, it's loud. Okay. Yeah. We only worked on that for one period. Like, he would give them grace. He ain't giving them no grace. He was on their butts like white on rice. He was as mad as heck. Okay, so that tells me this is something that they've worked on and something that they dropped the ball on, I think, like six or seven times in the game. Yeah, I mean, it was, the penalties, it was, it was crazy. Seven. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I mean, it's frustrating. And from, like, a viewer's perspective or maybe from a fan's perspective, I mean, you're like, what is going on? From a player's perspective, of course, they understand the ins and outs of it, why it's difficult. Either way, it's got to be cleaned up. We don't need to be a dead horse. But regardless – those are the things that can cost you. Luckily, they didn't hear for Alabama in this game on the road, but it could have. We're talking about several penalties that need to get cleaned up. This is not the first time this year that it's happened. Uh, they need to yeah. tighten up. I, I think that's something that that's an easy fix. Um, we definitely look like we were undisciplined, but uh, – and I know but negates everything. Uh, so I'm just going to say but. Yeah. But I think it's an easy fix. I think it's something you work on. Two days is corrected, but – yeah, we got to get some. We got to get uh, Milrow some protection, man. Yeah, look, come on, man, do your job, O line, tighten right. up. Let's talk about the defense quick. Uh, yes or no? It was a blindside block on the blocked field goal attempt and return for touchdown. You see my face? <laughs> I knew this was coming. I knew this was coming, and I'm just telling you, the guy didn't even fall down unless I didn't see it. Yeah, dude, didn't fall. It's become a two-hand touch after that, man. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I have to I, agree with you on that. I mean, at first, I'm like, oh man, like Dallas Turner, I'm making these mental mistakes. Like, are you serious? Was it unnecessary? It was unnecessary. I mean, he didn't need to hit the guy 20 yards behind the ball, and didn't need to. But I don't think that it should have negated a, a touchdown by the defense. I mean, that's crazy. Anyway, Bama's defense was resilient down the stretch. Uh, se stepped up at every turn when they needed to in the second half. And I think that that definitely gives Alabama confidence going into now um, Arkansas at home. It's 11 a.m. kickoff on Saturday. Arkansas, Sam Pittman is a great coach. I'm a huge fan of him. Um, K.J. Jefferson is an elite quarterback. Has he been um, in the court? He's, he's, been, he's been in the league for like 15 years, man. Yeah, yo. I mean, we've, been about talking about, we've been talking about this guy for like 10 years. Yeah, we're about, we're about the same age. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. He's a definitely a Sunday quarterback um, yeah. with the right team. I, I don't think the record reflects what how close the games they've played in the past have been. Yeah. All the games have been extremely close, um, not just a beat down, but I think this is a game that you have to take serious. Again, mm -hmm. it's an SEC game. It's a home game. It's an early game. So yeah. times – it's a lot that goes into it. I think Bama better bring their A game and the O-line must protect because 
believe it or not, Arkansas defense is a solid defense and they do apply pressure. Mike, let's talk prediction. This is going to be an early kickoff. Did you like early kickoff when you played? Hey, what? Well, yeah, because you had you know, the party the, in the evening. We, we knew what party we were going. Why are we the same night? college? Literally, like <laughs> having played college sports, like that was the only positive thing. Like you knew you were going to be home by about five o'clock, and you know Mommy, whatever the, whatever pregame weekend. was going on, that was the pregame that mattered. And then you were going to go out. Yeah, that was a man. That's funny. That's true though. It would. I mean, that is yeah. accurate. You tell my mom, hey, look, y'all can stay here, but yeah. I'm going to holler at y'all. I'm going to catch y'all on. I'm yeah. going to catch y'all for breakfast in the morning. No question. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Uh, how, how do you feel about this game uh, when it comes to what things look like on the scoreboard? All right. My prediction time, boom, 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 35-14, Bama. Okay. I like it. I like it. I'm very similar. 35-17. Maybe Alabama needs to settle in a little bit defensively early game all those things factor in but i do feel like this game will get out of hand relatively quickly in the alabama will roll at home so we will see uh mike mccoy alabama looking to improve to four and oh in the sec against sam Pittman and the arkansas razorback this should be a good one and uh looking forward to it 11 a.m get your coffee out let's smoke some hogs baby let's, let's smoke some hogs all right guys thank you so much for tuning in to head to head, I want to thank our sponsor, the Alabama Cattlemen's Association, and we will see you next week. Peace. Brought to you by Alabama Beef Farmers and Ranchers.